Yes, you're saying that right, ladies and gentlemen. A late hate is... Kevin, what, what do we call this video? Reviewing Raw? Ranting about? I don't even know. We're giving you guys some Raw-themed, Miss and Mrs. kind of themed content. Whatever. Kevin, I know you're I'm, ready to go. Just... I'm a little triggered. I'm <laughs> oh, a little God. triggered right now. Oh, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. Um, <laughs> WWE, they signed, like, what, a $1.5 billion deal with the USA Network? Correct. Correct. And... What is the content that we're getting on a regular basis on Monday nights now? We're getting Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston making Chris Jericho 2016 Chris Jericho style jokes where they're like, oh, Riddle, can we have some bro nuts? Can we have some bro And, uh, oh, God, I'm just thinking, like, how did this wind up on TV? What, what a world do we live in where Matt Riddle is... He's more overexposed than 1998 Stone Cold Steve Austin. How many segments was Riddle in on this freaking show? Like four, uh, four, five. It's just, you lose track, my guy. Like Matt Riddle is everywhere on this show, and like what they're doing with him and Randy Orton, Kevin. I mean, what do you think? You're, you're our, you know, you're our resident Matt Riddle, you know, super fan. What do you think of Ar- Rated RK, bro? It has go away heat with me. <laughs> it's it's bringing Randy Orton down. I, I've been a fan of Randy Orton from the beginning of 2020 up until this point right now. <laughs> Randy Orton's been doing the best work of his career all through 2020, early 2021, and he's willing to flush that down the drain to have the New Day and other people throw tomatoes at him. You know, he's... And then he's hanging out with Riddle, and Riddle's like, bro, you had tomato juice dripping from your face, bro. Like, what am I watching? This is Randy Orton. This is a guy that's a first ballot Hall of Famer, 14-time WWE champion. He's done so many... So many things. He's done literally everything there is to do in WWE. And now he's hanging out with a stoner. And th- and Matt Riddle's going, bro, you got tomato juice on you, bro? Are you kidding me? Kevin, bro, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play devil's advocate for a moment here. People are going to say, I'm enjoying it. Oh, you like Team Hell No. How is this any different? Kevin, for those people who inevitably are going to be watching this video, w- walk me through how Team Hell No was infinitely better than this and how this is that much more cringe by comparison. Team Hell No had character development. There was another layer to the character of Kane. Kane was now being portrayed as this guy, this sensitive, big, evil man that had feelings. And he had Daniel Bryan breaking out. Daniel Bryan was just, he was starting to scratch the surface of what the Yes movement could be. And you had Dr. Shelby as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Dr. Shelby was really good. They had good segments that, that, ha- that hold up in the test of time. You could go back nine years later and watch... Kane hanging out with Matt, with uh, Dr. Shelby, you know, and Daniel Bryan screaming at Dr. Shelby. You can go back and watch that and think, okay, this is a good segment. Nobody in nine years' time is going to be like, hey, bro, you got to put on that segment, that Matt Riddle segment where he was like, hey, Randy, you got tomato juice on your face? N- nobody's going to want to watch that nine years from now. It's not, it doesn't have any longevity, no staying power. Like, at this point, people are trolling if they say they like this, in my opinion. Yeah, and like, like you go through the YouTube clips, like I was scrolling the YouTube clips about a moment ago, trying to figure out like what really happened on this show, and this Riddle stuff right here, the segment's called Riddle Tries to Make Randy Orton Laugh, and that's literally more notable than anything else on this show, because quite literally, Kevin, this show, I want to talk about this ending for a second, now, honest question, has a show that's ended with Braun Strowman wrecking havoc and standing tall in the past, like, two, three years ever been good? I can't think of one that's been good, Kevin. When you, when you close the show with Braun Strowman going up to MVP, shouting, I'm going to bust in your boy! And then hitting Lashley with a, a spear through the barricade. Like, Kevin, to quote you for a second, what is this, bro? What is this? I mean... <laughs> Honestly, like I, I'm Strowman screaming at MVP, Adnan Verks having like a like a fit on commentary. Corey Graves is like his heart rate spiking through the roof as he's watching the white trash redneck Hicks screaming at MVP, and literally Lashley's like, oh, oh it's so so you're on the same page with me, man. And then Braun Strowman's like, I'm not your friend, and slams him, and that's raw. The Raw before WrestleMania backlash, Kevin. How excited are you based on that ending? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for WrestleMania backlash, pal. I can't wait to watch MVP get his comeuppance on the evil Braun Strowman, pal. 
Oh, but like, <laughs> you go. What is this? Like, what is this? <laughs> Wait, why is why is Braun Strowman all of a sudden the biggest baby face on Raw? Cause you he, know, like because he what, made, what, he made... last year when he was the biggest baby face on SmackDown, getting slimed by the Miz. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but but Kevin Braun Strowman beat uh, beat Vince McMahon's fifty-one year old son in the cage match, Kevin. But but Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Braun Strowman, this guy, he, why is he the top star? The top baby face? Like, Matt Riddle is getting more TV time than 1998 Stone Cold Steve Austin. Braun Strowman is being treated like the biggest baby face in, in WWE right now. We're what opening, are we doing? We're opening the show with 25 minute segments that are revolving around Charlotte Flair. Like, that six woman tag match was all about Charlotte. The presentation of the match was, oh my god, is Charlotte getting tagged in the match? When's the Queen ma- making her appearance? Like, Kevin, how can you open the show with Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Charlotte versus Asuka and, what, Mandy Rose and Naomi to open the show, and Alexa Bliss is out there swinging on a swing set? Like, like, just, what's happened to this show? What, 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 wait, wait, I, I didn't see the opening segment, so Alexa Bliss was swinging? Basically, the basically, they the open the show, match. Charlotte comes out there, and this ends up being the six-woman tag match. You've got... I think Rhea was on commentary. She might have been. She might not have been. Whatever. It's a six-woman tag match. Just WB trying to get through to the Backlash pay-per-view, etc. Yeah? And then... Like, I'm barely paying attention. I'm scrolling Twitter. I look up, and Alexa Bliss is just on a swing set. She's, like, she's like on the stage, just swinging on a swing set. And then the Lily Doll's just there. And then I'm just like, oh, okay. Does have its own seat on the swing set? Uh, yes. So, are they building towards Alexa Bliss versus... Maybe Rhea Ripley. I, I, I t- do I care enough to want to see it? Not yeah, really. Is, is the Lily Doll gonna get a title match? Is that what's gonna happen? I mean, I, I, it beats me. But could, Kevin, I'm, <laughs> you, hold on. I gotta say this. Could you imagine if WWE had Rhea Ripley wrestle the Lily Doll? Like, do you know what kind of war that would start on the internet? Because people would instantly bring up Kenny Omega wrestling the Blow Up Doll. So if they had Rhea Ripley wrestle Lily Doll, like it would just create madness, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, like, look at what we're literally talking about. Rhea Ripley, a 24-year-old Australian who's all about my brutality, wrestling a, a, a doll. Like, like, what? What is this show, Kevin? And then it, to make it worse, this isn't even to do with Raw. But after watching 30 minutes of Miz and Mrs., I, I, I don't want to be associated with wrestling at all. Like, after seeing so, that you show... Watch, you watched a full episode of Miz and Mrs. I've rubbed off on you. I, I can't wait to hear about your experience. As I'm watching Miz and Mrs., and the whole plot of the show is Mike the Miz Mizanin walking into, like, the bedroom with Maurice, going, I made be- um, breakfast in bed for you, Maurice. And Maurice is like, oh, well, that, that's so kind of you, but th- there must be a catch. And Miz is like, there's no catch, but wait, there is a catch. Actually... I'm going fishing with George Mazanin today. You're going to be stuck with my mother, and so you're going to have to make friends and talk to my mother-in-law all day. And then, of course, what ends up happening is the Miz's mother-in-law ends up hitting on some, like, some guy at, like, the spa or beauty salon they're at, and it's the most uncomfortable, like, forced, scripted sexual references you'll ever see, Kevin. It's literally, oh, it's so bad. You've got, you got the Miz's mother getting a back massage from some, like, 25-year-old man, and she's, like, moaning. And Maurice is like, oh, this is... I'm, I'm feeling very uncomfortable. Like, Kevin... They, they, they did a talking head with Maurice, where she's, like, cringing, right? Yes, they had one of her, her sitting in, like, the mansion in the living room, being like, I was just trying to get my... I was just, I was just trying to get my back massage. And then uh, the Mike's mother couldn't help but make, make it all about her. And then, the, meanwhile, they cut back after all of this, and then Miz is fishing with George Mazanin, and Dolph Ziggler just shows up, and you get Ziggler and the most G-rated comedy. Like, Mike leaves to go deal with something, and then he comes back, and they're fishing, and George Mazanin's helping Dolph Ziggler try and, like, get, you know, cast his rod, and then, literally, like, George Mazanin's grabbing Dolph Ziggler from behind, and they're both just, like, moaning. I, I'm just, like... Why? You know, I, it was beyond words, and then Miz comes back and just like, oh my god, oh my god, and like Miz is freaking out. It's literally, as you've described it, it's like a Jake Paul vlog skit, only even less funny, ten times more cringe, and you take out the personality in it. Kevin, Miz and Mrs. is this, the worst. This is basically what this is. This is like if Jake Paul gets knocked out in a fight, 
and he loses all of his fame. In four years, he's going to wind up on some B, B-level network doing a reality TV show, and it's going to be The Miz and Mrs. Right, so, so that happened. Anyway, back to Raw for a second. So Jinder Mahal made his return tonight, Kevin. Um, I mean, thoughts on this? We have Jinder Mahal now. Like, you should be happy about it, damn it, pal. Like... I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I like I like Jinder. I was happy to see him. Yeah, I missed him. Uh, he squashed Jeff Hardy. A lot of people were mad about that. I saw you treat the Jeff Hardy deserves better. Correct. I don't know if I was serious or if you were just having a having a play at everybody I, I, on I mean, Twitter. I mean, the thing with Twitter is it's a bit of both. Like just about most of the time, if not more of a playing around. But like the thing with Jeff Hardy, I did that fifteen replies being like he loses one match to J- uh, to uh, Jinder Mahal, and you just want to complain. And I'm just like, it's not just one isolated match, you, you blithering idiot. Literally, look at look, look at what Jeff Hardy's done this year. Like, I get his, I believe his father passed, if I'm not mistaken. He, he lost a family member, which that's completely like, you know, take away a month from that. Cool. What's Jeff done the rest of this year? Nothing. It's just like, this is a guy who, especially after I've made my transformation of Jeff Hardy video, he's literally a proven star. This is a guy who's made it in 2008 when the roster was as stacked as it ever was, Kevin. This guy was the WWE champion and like the main star of the company in that time period. And it was at- mainstream at that time. Jeff Hardy was mainstream. Like I, people that didn't really watch wrestling, they were fans of Jeff Hardy. He was a big deal, bro. No, but n- now he's irrelevant and people are like oh well m- maybe jeff versus jinder's gonna turn into a, a storyline <laughs> <laughs> jeff and jinder in a storyline on raw you reckon is it they're gonna do jinder squashing jeff every week for a month and then jeff's gonna go back to doing nothing for three weeks and then, then like that's legit oh kevin kevin just well the well oh. the, the story will be that jinder reminds us that jeff has a drug problem yeah you know, we're gonna get that because that i mean that's edgy that's creative you know, that we've never had that story before. So Jinder would come out and be like, I, as your Maharaja, I will not let you do drugs anymore, Jeff. Like, we'll get something cheesy like that. And then there'll, the be, some, go crazy. there'll be some hidden camera backstage segment of Jinder Mahal doing, like, you know, steroid cycling. And it's like, what is this, dude? Like, it's just, I just, I don't even know. Like, I, God forbid. So anything else you want to talk about with Raw? I mean, the other thing, I guess, is Humberto Creo attempting a, of like a sunset flip power bomb, bomb on Sheamus a minute into their match, botching, literally, I can either breaking his collarbone or like doing some like injury, and then the match being waved off. That's like the only other thing that happened on Raw, Kevin. Did you see that? Any thoughts? Anything else to talk about? Hit us with something. I, I did not see that. That's crazy. Yeah, so legit. About, they're, yeah, wow. they're doing Humberto versus Sheamus. Like that was like a one-on-one match. They're like a minute in. Humberto attempts his like sunset flip power bomb to Sheamus. He, he catches him with it, like, he lands funny, and then something in his, like, right arm or his, like, shoulder or his head, something, he, like, come to, like, wave for the doctor, and then they, the ref just called the match. So, that happened. Um, I saw the botch guy made a video about it, Millennial Smart covered it. Seemingly the most notable part of Raw, Humberto Creo botching. So, yeah, fun. I mean, yeah, so to recap for this three-hour show, Charlotte's the queen, uh, Matt Riddle and Randy Orton love tomatoes, Braun Strowman hates MVP now for some reason. And Jinder Mahal came back and Humberto Carrillo separated his shoulder. So that's that's Raw right there at five bullet points. That's a three-hour show wrapped up in that eight seconds. Um, my takeaway from the show, Kevin, the only thing I'm going to remember is the visual of Braun Strowman in MVP's face screaming, I'm going to bust in your boy. That's all I'm going to remember from this show, Kevin. So, um, yeah, I think with that being said, we can get ready to oh, I'm stuff it. Unless you have any last thing to say, I'm just going to wrap this video and close it, pal. Yeah, I got I got nothing, man. I mean, I, I'm glad that you experienced Ms. and Mrs. You know, you, you, now you're down bad, pal. It's... <laughs> like, I couldn't believe I was watching. It, the acting is so bad. Like, so some of the... Like, oh, it's just... It's, a, it's literally just... It's like third grade humor performed by a 41 year old D list reality TV star with a hot wife. That's the show. So, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, sub, elite heat, get us 300 subs, all that kind of stuff. Peace.